But the one thing I would just point out here, which is kind of a, something that I've been kind of playing around with, is that if you look at the equal weight, it's actually it actually is very closely following Bitcoin. And I, I wanted to share my there. screen real on really. Oh, so I had the S and P equal weighted, which yeah, thing for today. But yeah, so so we know Bitcoin made a high back in March, right? And that was its all time high, and that's the same point where the equal weight S and P made a high. And then you had this secondary high over here, which mirrored Bitcoin. Um, and that kind of the only difference is that Bitcoin's kind of rolled over. The equal weight's actually catching a bid now. But I just thought that was kind of interesting to notice that it's it's almost like Bitcoin's not in the group of the the mega caps. It's not the sexy mega caps like Nvidia, but it still seems to be a little bit following the equal weight. The United States Consumer Price Index (CPI) rose by 3% year over year in June, slightly below the market consensus of 3.1%. Analysts claim that the CPI release is bullish for Bitcoin. Yet traders are questioning why its price remains below dollar fifty-eight thousand. Several factors could explain investors' lack of enthusiasm, according to trader, YouTuber, and crypto analyst Crypto Bitcoin. The weakness in Bitcoin's price can be attributed to scalpers and market makers trying to liquidate leveraged longs. However, the trend favors a continuation higher, suggesting that BTC should bounce back to dollar sixty thousand in the near term. Essentially, if the U.S. central bank cuts interest rates. Incentives for fixed income investments are reduced, and some of this money will seek higher returns elsewhere. According to the CME Group's Fed Watch tool, traders are now pricing a 47% chance of two interest rate cuts in 2024, up from 24% the previous week. Furthermore, Yavi Finance reported that Fed Chair Jerome Powell is paying closer attention to the employment rate, noting that the central bank is increasingly aware of the risks posed by a cooling labor market. Despite data indicating higher odds of rate cuts, with consensus surpassing 90% odds of at least a 1.25% rate cut by September, Bitcoin's price remains pegged below $60,000. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 stock market index is 0.5% below its all-time high, and gold, the market's preferred store of value, is trading 1.2% below its $2,450 record high from May 2024. Even the Russell 2000 small cap index, which excludes the 1,000 largest U.S. listed companies, rose 3% on July 11. Given the constructive view of traditional finance, investors struggle to find explanations for Bitcoin's lack of bullishness. This decoupling is particularly concerning given that spot Bitcoin exchange-traded funds, EPS, captured $800 million in inflows over the past four trading days, according to Farside Investors data. To make matters worse, the U.S. dollar index, which measures the U.S. dollar against a basket of foreign currencies, declined to its lowest level in five weeks at 104.4. This suggests that investors are not seeking shelter in cash positions, which could partially explain Bitcoin's bearishness. But it's a, it's a psychology. I remember it very clearly in 2008. Um, once the stock market going down, and I lived in Fairfield, Connecticut, a wealthy area, and the spending just shut off instantly. And once people don't see their statement, see it's giving back 20%, it's not going up right away. Um, even their housing house that doubled in the last 10 years is trickling down and it, it shuts on everything. We're just overdue for a normal cycle. Maybe it's starting soon. I think it's going to be starting this year. Maybe Trump will save us, but the market's priced for so much optimism. I'm just pointing about a little, pointing out the potential for a little bit of normalization. And maybe that starts today. I don't know. Today's just a normal little backup, but I think Bitcoin was the best leading indicator after the great financial crisis. I think it's perfect to show us where we're going to be heading in the next and, Bi and Bitcoin, let's let's be fair, Bitcoin was a great indicator of the top in 2021 in the stock market. I think it topped about six weeks right prior to the stock market. So it's yeah. just something to keep an eye on there. A simple measure of Bitcoin versus a 100-week mover and average breaking down. You see the S&P 500 versus a 100-week mover and average. It's just really expensive. Most rational traders don't buy there. They just look for spots to, you mean, you ride it for a little while, you look for put strategy is also a key thing I want to show you about Bitcoin. Again, this is the key thing I've been pointing out for a while. It's that divergent weakness. Bitcoin uh, versus gold. It's been breaking down when it should be breaking out higher. And this is overlaid with the S&P 500 E-minis. Two gaps below the market. Since 1997 on a weekly chart, we've never left, left one gap. Um, key thing that I that really, really struck me in 2007, I, I focus on this a lot. And this is just look at volatility. S&P, the VIX volatility index versus T-bills, a 52-week move on average. It's very low, potentially bottomed again. Bitcoin versus S&P 500 is breaking down. And on a pure technical basis, it's about 10 right now. There's no reason it came back, get back to 10, 7. It doesn't mean anything in the big picture. But I want to tilt over to something I think that's really significant and I published today. 
economic surprise index in the country. It's tilting over the way I think it really should. It went too far the other way. Now we're seeing all the signs of that overdue recession just starting to kick in. It's at the lowest in about 10 years. Now I overlay this with gold versus the S&P 500. Gold is just so cheap versus the S&P 500. Just a little pop up should should do that. It, it should happen. I think it's just a matter of time. That's what I'm showing here. But I, I want to show you a few others and I'll, I'll lay low and see your response. So Ethereum, I've been watching CNBC in the morning, getting ready for work. And um, and basically, I'm seeing these Bitwise commercials for the ETF nonstop for Ethereum. And, and do you have any information on that? And, or, and do you think like we could see a run up because of that? Or is it more of a wild card? I think we saw the run up when they were uh, surprisingly approved. We added, you know, 30%, I think, to Bitcoin in a matter uh, to Ethereum in a matter of two days. I had Eric Balchunas and James Seyfert on my show yesterday, the two ETF analysts from Bloomberg, specifically talk Ethereum ETF. They think July 18th, their best guess for them to start trading. So that's a week from today. But they also thought that there was a likely chance they would have launched a week ago. So they, they say, take it with a grain of salt. We don't really know what the SEC is doing here, but they are coming. Listen, it's going to largely depend on what Grayscale does with their fees on the Ethereum trust, right? We saw that there were a number of reasons why people were selling GBTC after the approval, right? You had the people that were playing the discount trade. You had the people that had been locked and just wanted to get out. And you had people who were seeking a lower fee than 1.5%. If Grayscale comes in at 1.5% again and everybody else is at 19 bips, we're going to see a massive sell-off of the 8 to $9 billion in AUM of Ethereum. And we're going to get that sell the news. But once again, it's a fundamental, like you can watch that, those coins being sold. That's the yeah. transparency of I'll this market. But if they come in with a competitive rate, and I think they're going to launch those Ethereum minis, uh, maybe we don't get the massive sell-offs uh, from selling pressure. But listen, 10, 8, 9, 10 billion, depending on the price in EP, that's a lot of Ethereum relative to the market size, even more so than the 25 billion that was in GBTC was to the total size of Bitcoin.